Hello everyone. Thanks for having me at IMCCRT 2020. My name is Anis Nisati from the Department of English, Safi Institute of Advanced Study, Kerala, India. Uh, the title of my paper is The Great Indian Politics, Theory of Conflict and Illusion of Solution. The discourses evolving around political conflicts are a subject of interest for so many years. The main concerns over the topic are whether or not resistance a byproduct of liberation, where does a system positions conflict, and is resistance a sign of the failure of the very system, and it goes on. Conflict is an open clash between two opposing groups, individuals, or communities. The protest and resistance are terms which are a part of or leading factors to the conflict. Many theoreticians over time have tried to define social conflict and resistance as a part of their goal to understand the multifaceted working of particular society. Jürgen Habermas, uh, Michel Foucault, Karl Marx, everyone has their own idea on political and social conflict. This paper takes Michel Foucault's concept of conflict to analyze the political situation despite the fact that it was always being criticized for bringing the darker side of the system into light and then leaving abruptly without uh, giving a reliable alternative. Foucault's discussion on resistance and conflict spreads all over his books, talks, interviews, etc. And it is not a central um, idea of his theories, but just a part of his larger discussions around power relations. Counterconduct is one of the terms he uses in relation to this, which refers to the resistance by a subject or a group uh, against the processes implemented for conducting in a system. The dialogue between the binary oppositions like state and citizens, dominant and subordinate, majority and minorities and the like shape and forward the social dynamics and it enables a new orientation in the study of resistance, dissent and protest. In this paper, I am basically attempting to use the tools and techniques of Foucault to shed light on the visibilities established, knowledge invoked, techniques adopted and identities produced while analyzing protests and their relationship to global power relations and government dollars. For that purpose, I here take the recent protest and resistance going on in India for over a year to understand the pluralities of socio-political conflicts. Upon a closer look, one can find that Muslims in India, Hindus in Pakistan or whatever the religious minority in any country for that matter, are in constant conflict, theoretically, with the socio-cultural setup of that country, which is fueled by and furthers the dominant religion. This resistance can be political, social or cultural, and even ethnical. With the passing of the Citizenship Amendment Act, CAA, recently, after the National Register of Citizens, NRC, this conflict in India has advanced from years-old passive resistance to a multi-faced protest. The law solidifies the idea of Indian state as a non-secular Hindu Rashtra by offering Indian citizenship to refugees from all religions but Islam. Through making religion a possible criteria for acquiring citizenship, the government is openly de declaring its agenda of religious cleansing in India. The wide protest against the law show that people of India have concerns over the law. An analytics of this protest using Foucaultian theory of conflict, counterconduct, and resistance has many advantages. Primarily, by focusing on practices and mentalities rather than politically charged actors, it shows how moments of protest bring new identities, subjectivities, and collectivities into being. Secondly, by destabilizing binaries including power and resistance, government and freedom, national and anti-national, such an approach enables a more complex and nuanced analysis of a social situation.
This is more essential in a country where the government brands everyone who is against uh, the state policies as terrorist or anti-nationals. This is basically creating political binaries where one pole is good patriotic citizens and the other pole is bad anti-national Pakistan, Pakistan spies. This branding is a way of de-glamorizing the protest against the government. As Foucault himself says, I quote, we need to escape the dilemma of being either or for or against. One can, after all, be face to face and upright. Working with the government doesn't imply either a subjection or a blanket acceptance. One can work with and be in strengthening at the same time. I would even say that the two things go together. A critically important task here is, therefore, to interrogate the degree to which Acts of resistance destabilizes or reinforce existing power relation, and in that case, case here, to explore how far the protest against CAA has changed power equations and political currents in India. As a response to this particular concern, a counter-conducts approach drawing on the work of Michel Foucault can be used to disaggregate the concept of resistance and highlight how some resistant practices work to subvert dominant phase of being. One of the features of a counter-conduct approach is an attention to the interpretations of forms of power and resistance, governmentality, and alternative modes of subjectification. Examples are provided from uh, contemporary India, specifically the CAA protest, which bordered different religions, castes, and ethnical minorities for a nationwide protest. The politically uh, and socially, they challenged the mainstream, yet they also have quite problematic implications for progressive politics and radical uh, theories. The question being, the CAA has not been amended or suspended at least as of now, even after the long resistance and nationwide protests against it, after its passing on 15th December 2019. If so, as a protest against that particular law, is not the whole protest a failure? The answer to this question is where we go back to Foucault. And he believes that those who are conflicted are also willing to subject themselves to the kinds of truth and laws that are produced by that particular system. For instance, the co court as a social institution is to provide justice to the subjects. And even then, if uh, the justice is not provided correctly, talking against the court is punishable under the law. And that's basically like an example of power producing truth and knowledge. The problem arises from the system, nevertheless, the solution is also decided by the system. That, that makes uh, the entire procedure a farcical illusion of the actual solution. When I remark that conflict brings no permanent or real solution in the system, as far as the subject conflicting is adhering to the norms and conditions of that very system, that may scare some with some dystopian idea of a system. But the matters relating to the solution of a conflict is not that problematic if we are to take the conflict as just a part of the system itself rather than something that is against the system. Much of the social movement theories uh, has tended to conceptualize resistance or protest as an act of opposing power which, is, which contradicts the power. This binary between power and resistance is pronounced in almost all the study of protest. Um, but here, Foucault argues that power struggles are inevitable. They condition and form truth in human relations. Conflicts are necessary for the progression of a system. It brings out and explains the weakness of the system, helps to correct them, and then pays way to the better version of the existing system. In other words, conflict and power struggles are so normal, it's all over and everywhere in the system, and that is something always conditions the human existence and interaction. The conflict arises, protests are carried out, and many solutions are also so proposed. Foucault shows us that there have been uh, tried different solutions 
some were better or worse than others. The social religious oppression against Muslims in India has started from the time of Indo Pak partition. From then on, uh, there have been many protests carried as a resistance to the, this particular oppression and uh, many solutions were also proposed, but then still the problem continues. Proposing a solution with the aim of making people better off by, for instance, here, proposing a permanent solution to the oppression against Muslims in India um, would already be on the wrong tra uh, track because according to Foucault, some problems are inherently unsolvable in a uh, system. In other words, he rejects that there is always a possible transformation for conflict in a society. The conflicts between the sane and insane, the excluded and included, the minority and the majority are not possible to end. It will be there with the system and within the system. It is this conflict that basically defines the system. This paper actually contrasts itself from existing approaches to the study of the resistance and protest. Like I stated in the start, the major criticism against Foucault or any critic like me who continues his line of thoughts to deal with political uh, protest will be that Foucault is reluctant to propose an alternative to the problems he brings to light in his discussions. The way in which Foucault identified the limitations of political transformation shapes his reluctance to come up with a clear-cut policy in order to deal with the uh, problem in question. It's like he is aware of the ineffectiveness of the alternative even before proposing it. Foucault's project is, to, is basically is to lay out some evils in the society, but he does not offer a strategy or solution to progress. Some may even argue that Foucault's Nietzschean legacy is highly problematic because it leaves out any guiding set of rules for social policies. Although I totally accept that criticism, I think that every oppressed in every system across the world uh, has tried different ways to protest against oppression they are facing in particular point of time and situation. And these means are local and may not be fit to address the necessities of others, even that effective strategy could prove ineffective in that same system in another point of time. An attempt to find an universal or a real solution in a social system is actually an illusion. And as Foucault suggests, conflict shapes the way the system is structured. It is a part of the system and is, it is tend to rise in at any point or another. The protest against CAA has not been fruitful in stopping the law being passed, but it still gave some benefit to the Indian society. To outline a few, like it paved a foundation for the unity between Dalits, Adivasis and Muslims or any socially and politically oppressed communities in India. It could even politicize the usually uh, apolitical middle class Muslims. It could initiate positive dialogues between different political parties representing different backward classes in India, etc. So as a framework, however, this analytics of protest is li not limited to Indian politics, but uh, can also provide a Foucaultian approach to the study of politics and protest in far broader range of contexts uh, like man, many other countries or systems or communities. There is no assumption that the above approach, uh, the one I proposed or rather Foucault proposed, is the best or the only one. Know that everybody has to give up uh, on the idea of protest since as I said a solution to political conflicts are less likely to happen. I'm not into that argument because Basically, or uh, on a basic level, conflicts are the acting agent of social mobility, progress, and it's a vital part of the system's existence. That's all about this particular paper. I'm open to suggestions, um, extra points, or if you need any clarification, you can always contact me. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.